Welcome to the show. I'm Simon Scott, and for this episode of Think and Tackle, we've come to deepest, darkest Essex. We've come to a lake called the Quarry, and it used to be a syndicate lake, it's just become a day ticket fishery, and I want to find somebody who will be able to show me a thing or two about fishing in this neck of the woods. Hopefully, we should find Elliot Gray somewhere down here. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> Hello, fella, how are you? Good, yeah. Good to see you, I'm very and well. You? Wow, well, you said it was a lovely spot. What a beautiful, mature lake. It's wicked, isn't it? Yeah, really lovely, looks fabulous. Made, you know, all the leaves are out and the hawthorns on the track are all in flower. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's quite, a, quite a venue, you know? For around here especially, like, it's definitely one of the more picturesque oh, and bigger it? ones around here. It's like, a yeah. cracking spot. Yeah. And this used to be a syndicate. I know of yeah, it as yeah, a syndicate. Yeah, for a, well, for a long time, for, well, for, as long as I know of, it's been a syndicate. The dead man shows, like right. everyone wanted to get on here. Um, and at one point, you know, it's full of really old, really big fish. Um, but now it's just, literally just got a day ticket, two weeks ago. It's got oh, a day really? ticket. Two weeks ago? Two weeks, oh, that's a bite. Oh my word, yep. I like this place a great lot. <laughs> oh my word. There you go. Oh, my word. <laughs> Good man. I see we've got uh, possibly a couple in the landing net already. Yeah. Fantastic. It's gone a bit, it's gone a bit mad, actually. Yeah, what a... It's, uh... You did say get here in good time. Yeah. The weather, look at the weather. You know, oh, it's, it's just it's fantastic, isn't it? The wind's coming down the lake. It's absolutely bang on. That is um, brilliant. Well done, fella. Oh. God, he's going quickly, this one. Stock here, Can I reckon. Really, these other rods at all? Are uh, okay? Should be all right. They're sort of out Where there. Where have you got them fishing out there? Basically, yeah. they're both. Well, so they're both fishing almost straight out. Okay. Um, my right and my middle rod are sort of a little bit further right than the left hand rod. And you're fishing a long way across, or about 70 yards. I was okay. fishing my left hand rod right across to the far tree line. I saw a few fish there yesterday when I arrived. Right. Uh, but all the. This is my. I think it's my seventh bite now. Seventh. Yeah. And. What time did you get here? I think you stitched me up. I got, I got here yesterday. I was told to be here this morning. <laughs> well, I got here yesterday quite early, uh, but I didn't fish. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> um, Seven. And they were, st they were stacked up in this corner. Um, loads oh, you've got of them. landing nets stuck all the way on the bank here <laughs> full of fish. Oh, here's another one, Scotty. Here's no, another one, Scotty. It's just a couple there. The rest are gone. Oh, well done. Fantastic. Oh, great to see a fish. are quick. Yeah, but there's been, there's been a lot down here. Like yesterday when I got here, there were probably 70 fish in this corner to my left. Right. Um, but like I say, I didn't fish for him. Well, not at first. You were prepped on the spots <laughs> for me, weren't you? Yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they yeah, were feeding, right. like, right, right up right up at shallow in the margins. I uh, got them feeding on three different spots. Fantastic. Um, in the end, I did fish for him. I caught one. So they do come right in the edge? Yeah, they do, oh, yeah. Right, so, yeah. So a non-caster like me has got half a chance then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you doing anything tricky out there? You, you just fishing? No, I'm chod fishing. Right, like, okay. Just the scattering of boilies? Just the scattering of boilies. Like I say, I, I fished this place in March and April of this year. Brilliant. Um, Basically every fish I caught, I caught on trod rigs, like nothing, you know, simple fishing, just finding fish, casting to them yeah, and, and then baiting, you know, like. Excellent. Did you catch some good ones? I d yeah, I did actually. I had, um, I had quite a few of sort of my target fish. I had the Lakes Big Common. Oh, well um, How big is that? It was just over 38. God, so it's a proper, proper lake, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, oh yeah. That's the thing, like, the, there's sort of probably 15 fish left in here that are, you know, they're over 45 years old. They're big fish, they're all, you know, they're over 30 pound. Um, they're absolute gems, you know. They're as, they're as, as good a carp you're going to catch anywhere. In the you know, they're, they're beautiful, yeah. they're old. They're sort of just everything you could want from, from a carp, really. So what you're asking me to do here is take a massive <laughs> responsibility because there's already two There's already two in there, yeah. In this landing net. Don't let them out. <laughs> <laughs> got him? Well, I'm pleased to say... <laughs> You've now got three fish in your landing net. Top man. Good Thank man. You. Well done, Elliot. What a cracking common. That'll do, wouldn't he? Yeah, beautiful. So this is the biggest one of the three that you had in your uh, landing net? Yep, I say the other two have gone back. One small common. Um, that was the fish that, as I walked into the swim initially, you caught? Yeah, the one, yeah. Oh, yeah, so that was that put the uh, small okay. common back. Well done, um, well held, sir. And the other one, the sort of that mid-20 mirror. Beautiful, that was, mahogany um, coloured fish, wasn't it? Absolute cracker. Yeah, yeah. but I've had, like, so I had that before, um, back in March, sort of just under 27 Brilliant. pounds. Brilliant, and then look at this. This is an absolutely stunning fish. What do you think this would weigh? It's got to be 24, 
25 pound, isn't it? Fat one, isn't it? So it's a beautiful fish. Little chunky thing. Yeah, so it's pretty clear to me that your rigs are working. I'd like to talk to you about that a bit <laughs> later on, but, but to be honest, now I think it's the time to go and get my own uh, fishing rod set up and uh, try and catch one of these yeah. stunning fish for myself. Go do it, mate. Perfect, that's got my marker float up. That spot's about 70 yards out. So I'm just gonna put this marker float rod on the rest for now. Let's close the bail arm. So what I've done is I've had a chat with Elliot and Elliot's told me of a fantastic spot that he's fished previously, 70 yards out, lining up with the trees on the far horizon. So I've got the float out on that. I've had a couple of casts around and it feels like there's a bit of gravel down there, which is great. Nice getting a donk on the, on the float as it's going down. Boom. Um, and then when I drag it back and I reel in, there's a bit of silky weed. So that seems like a great spot. The other thing that I've noticed is that round to the right and at about 30 to 40 yards, there's been quite a lot of intense bubbling. Um, we've just seen some just now, literally a few minutes ago. And I'm thinking, well, I can't fish all rods out on the 70 yard line. So I've had a chuck about out there with the lead to start with, about 30 yards, just round to the right hand side of the swim. And I found a lovely area, it's dumping down. And when I drag the lead back, I'm bringing in just a little bit of siltweed. I've had maybe 10 casts in the area, so I'm doing quite a bit of homework at the start now, so hopefully that will set me up for the next couple of days. Found an area I particularly like, as I say, it's thumping down, so what I've done is I've tied the lead round one of the sticks, that's uh, one of the pegs that's holding the bivy up, just walked it back, and having clipped it up, got 30 yards, paced out perfectly. I then repeated the process with the marker float rod, popped the marker float up, and I've then put about maybe 100 baits around it. So that might seem quite a bit, but I know from talking to Elliot, there's quite a lot of young fish in here that are really up for the food. Uh, and plus another buddy of mine that's fished here recently has said there's some big old tench in here, maybe double figure tench. So I'm figuring that I've got to put a bit of bait in if I'm going to try and trap the fish and get, stop them moving up and down the bank. So got spot out to the right, and then I'm now going to get set up with a couple of rods fishing out on the 70 yard line and I'm going to pretty much uh, adopt the style of uh, approach that Elliot's using because obviously it's working really well for him. Right, well, it's been fish showing sort of just beyond my baited spot for about an hour or so now. Um, I actually thought they were showing right on top of me, but I sort of misjudged it and they were showing beyond me. Rechucked all three rods. And it's about, I don't know, it's taken about an hour. And finally, one of them's gone. There's quite a lot of weed about. Um, so I'm just, I'm not bullying them, but you know, I'm keeping sort of firm pressure on the whole time. Last thing I want is I'm getting stuck in the weed. Right, well I said earlier that um, the fish were showing sort of, well I thought they were showing on top of the spot. Um, turns out they weren't, they were showing beyond it, but when I thought they were showing over me and I wasn't getting a bite, I thought that might be to do with the fact I had a pink hook bait on and I was feeding, I've put a hell of a lot of bait out now. Um, and the boilies I'm putting in are quite pale in colour. So I thought they might, you know, be sort of really tuned into the boilies and sort of avoiding the pink ones. So this is actually on a white pop-up rather than a pink. All the others have been on pink. But this one is on white. It may not have made a difference, but, you know, that's the rod that's gone. So who knows? We'll see over the next 24 hours or so. Oh, it's a big one. It's the big one. Oh, hang on. 
That looks like the biggest fish in the lake to me. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you in a cane, Elliot? It's the biggest well, one. I can miss the action, fella. Let me get the net. Get him! Get him! <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well done. Oh. Oh. That's a big <laughs> part. Yes. Nice one. Oh. That's a huge fish. <laughs> You've even got a load of willow oh. stuff in that lovely aerials. <laughs> oh. Fantastic. How about that? <laughs> that oh. is. That's, that's the biggest one, isn't it? Jesus. Cracker. Oh. <laughs> You've only got and caught the biggest fish in the lake. How do you know it is? I don't believe you. I've stared at enough pictures of it, mate. Yeah? God, it's <laughs> yeah. a beast, isn't it? Yeah, nice. That's an no, absolutely that's... enormous fish. Well done. I can't believe Look it, Look at mate. the width of it across the back. Shoulders, that's where it gets its name. Yeah, I can see <laughs> that would make sense. That is a serious set of shoulders. And how old do you reckon it is? Oh, uh, it's over 40 years old. They're, you know, the originals they are, yeah, they're all, it's a they're over proper, proper You can see, look at his back, like, you can just tell. That. The dorsal so gnarly, isn't it? Yeah, all worn away and... Okay, right, <laughs> so we need to get it out and weigh yeah. it accurately, obviously. Do it, shall we? Yep. <sighs> if I bring it round to you, Elliot. Let me break this down. Just okay, you said it's a bit of a funky net. I've had it a long, long time. People keep nearly breaking it. I'll pop that out of the way, okay? You're going to slide it into the sling? Yeah. This is a nice thing to do, Nick, to get them into the sling. Check the fins are all folded flat, particularly on a very big old fish like this. It'd be a real shame to damage it. So you need to make sure it's absolutely flat in there. Pecs are down. Is it all right? Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, all good. Get the other side, OK. Right. Do you want to get up on the, up on the bank yeah. and I'll, I'll lift it to you? Oh, where's the mandals? Okay, one, two, three, got her. Cool. Proper job. Well <laughs> done. Look at that. Cool. Oh, old wrinkly old fish. Look at that beautiful tail. What's left of it? Oh no, it's perfect. Oh. Oh. Got a good hook hold. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. Keep down, keep down, keep down. Ready? Yep. 38. 10? 38, 10? 10. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 38, 10. That'll do. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I reckon. Whoa, cracker, well done. <laughs> Look at that proper <laughs> old carp. Can't believe it, mate. I am honestly over the moon. Yeah, no, you should be. That's a beautiful, beautiful fish. It's, yeah, it's, it's exactly why I go carp fish, you know, big, yeah. old. It is proper. I carp. love the dorsal. It's just. Yeah, tiny. what's left of it? <laughs> it's just a tiny bit left. <sighs> Worn away. I believe it. Honestly, yeah. can't. <laughs> well done. Well, fingers crossed there's a couple out there with my name. Yeah, on let's it. hope so, mate. Because at the moment I'm spending a lot of time in your squid <laughs> looking at beautiful fish. But uh, you did say you'd show me how to fish in Essex, and you have done. Well done. <laughs> Right, I think we should get her back, don't you? I do, mate, yeah. Well done. Yeah. Top job. Oh, well done, that's an <laughs> awesome fish. Just oh, get her laid down in the water. Look, she's a very old lady, isn't she? We've got to let her get her breath back a bit before we let her go. That is a belter. A little bit oh. easier to talk now. She's not yeah, being you've held got up. some of the weight supported. Yeah. yeah, you did a good job there. Oh, That's I'm a cracking fish. So happy, I really am. Yeah. So, how old do you think it is? 40, yeah, 40 plus it's, years it's old. Over 40 years old. I mean, yeah. look at it. You it's know, a proper old <laughs> fish, isn't it? Look at it. Oh, well done. Incredible. Incredible. Well, oh, you started your spring on here. You had the big comma, yeah. and now you've had the big mirror. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> Completely. Oh, good timing. Good, good timing indeed. <sighs> Can't believe it. Oh, time for you to get your rods out, mate. And uh, <laughs> reckon, yeah. you start catching a few. I, I should stop gillying for you. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Oh, she let her go. I reckon.
Well, good morning. What a session this is turning out to be. I've had another three fish this morning. First one was a small mirror, about four pound, which I slipped straight back. Um, this one I had just before the cameras arrived. And as you can see, a sort of lovely scaly low 20 pounder. Um, and the fish you saw me playing was a 16 or 17 pound common, which I've also slipped back. There's a lot of fish out in front of me now. Um, I've put a lot of bait in the area and there's fizzing sort of all over the place. It's looking really good for more bites during the day. Um, I've also heard some buzzers going off in Scotty Swim. So you never know, I think he might have caught something. Um, we'll soon find out. But like I say, the weather's looking really good. There's clearly loads of fish down here. And if this sun stays out, I'm sure we're going to catch quite a few more today. Well, it is a truly beautiful carpy morning. But unfortunately, the big old Essex girls were playing hard to get for this boy from Hampshire. I know Elliot's been busy again, and I thought I was in luck about 10.30. I had a really good take on my left-hand rod and uh, connected into the fish. A couple of plods and boom, hook came out. Winch with pain, wriggle in. Mark up the line, cast it back out, nothing happened. And then at three o'clock this morning, the right hand spot, which is the short spot I spoke of earlier, absolute flyer. And I'm thinking, here we go, connected into it and it's gone round uh, to the right, which makes it quite awkward because of the trees in the margin here. And then the hook pulls. So I've had two hook pulls. So uh, I woke up at first light this morning with my tail between my legs, feeling that I've been well and done, well and truly done over. Anyway, um, I've made a few tweaks. Uh, I was fishing choddies on all three rods and I've made some changes now. I'm not fishing choddies on two of the rods and I might show you that later if it brings some results. Um, but at the moment as we see it looking out, the lake looks fabulous. There's willow fluff floating about, there's bubblers uh, dotted about all over this. So the concentration of bubblers certainly in the areas I'm fishing so that's, that's bringing me some confidence. Uh, there's one out there now just fizzing away right on where the rigs are. <laughs> so they're certainly out there and there's certainly some bubblers down to my left which would be bang on Elliot's spot and not so long ago I saw a fish head and shoulder over his spot as well so he's he's got a good load of fish over him um, so I think my plan is to, to stay put for a bit keep the rods out and fishing it looks really good for a chance now just enjoy the morning as I say it's a really carpy morning it's t-shirt warm despite the fact it's actually overcast and uh, keep my fingers firmly crossed that my chance will come up for a fish I'm, I'm Smarting at the moment, having dropped two, but uh, third time lucky. Well, Elliot's finally got a break in his fantastic fish hauling, uh, and I wanted to ask him a few questions about the rig that's doing the damage here at Quarry Lake. Uh, it's clearly a chod rig, Elliot, um, yep. but it's different to a chod rig that I might use. Um, so let's kick off with why are you using a chod rig here? Why have you picked a choddy? Well, basically, this, this venue, come the summer, is extremely weedy. Right. Um, I mentioned before that I fished this in March and April. Yep. Um, when I came on it, all that weed from the summer died down. The whole lake bed is littered with just dead weed. Right. So the opportunity style fishing I was going to do, a lot of overnighters, and you know, I wanted to just find these fish and fish to them, and that, the chod rig enables me to do that. Sea fish, doesn't matter where so they you're are. You're not worrying about spots them. particularly, you just think there's a few fish showing, get the bait out. Yeah, it's just more areas. Like right. If the fish are there, I'll fish there. Sim right. Simple as that, basically. Okay, brilliant. So running down, if we take it from my left hand first, I see you've got a little bead there. What's what's happening with that? Right, basically, that's a bead uh, with a small slot in it, okay. and that sits over a plastic, like a sleeve, a tungsten sleeve. And what's the advantage of the little slot? Basically, so the bead can come off right. and actually detach from and the line. It just drops off the line completely. Yeah, just, it's just fish safety, you know. Okay, it's, brilliant. saves the bead getting wedged and anything bad. Okay, and then if we run down to the rig itself, um, that looks very tall to me as a choddy. <laughs> uh, you know, I've, I've fished with guys in the past who say, oh, you want a really short choddy, it's close to the bed of the lake. That's, yep. that's standing up miles. Um, yep. what's, what's the rationale behind that? Well, there's, sort of, there's three reasons. Uh, firstly, when I, go, when I go fishing, it's all about the biggest fish in the lake. Yep. Like that's, that's why I'm there. It doesn't matter where I go, I want to catch the biggest one or the biggest ones, you know. That big pop-up to a small fish, it looks very obtrusive, like that if they go near that they can tell something's wrong. It must look really crude to a Yeah, you know, fish, it's almost level with their eyes as they're yeah. feeding, whereas a big fish, they're much bigger. When they're feeding, 
especially on a spread of borders, which is what I'm putting out of a frying stick, they're right. coming between baits, they don't even realise that's off the bottom, you know, their gut's too deep for them to yeah. ever sort of become level with it, so they take that with, with gusto, you know. Okay. Um, also, when it goes into a fish's mouth, it goes into a small fish's mouth, it, it's almost in the back of their gills by the time, but again, like <laughs> a big fish, it's, it's just a nice big hook section, very stiff, just hard for them to deal with, you know. I want it to go in once. Yeah. So stay. that's not that's not mainline you've you've used to tie that, is it? It's a it's a specific. Yeah. It's a, it's a it's a purpose, mate. It's a very stiff monofilament. Right. Okay. And then I see you've got a massive hook on there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Again, uh, like I say, the big fish thing. Like, I want to catch the biggest fish in the lake. That's always my target wherever yeah. I go. So the bigger the hook, in my opinion, the less chance of it coming off. There's a bigger barb. It's stronger. Um, and they they tend to stay in. Like you know, from this venue now, I've had over 30 bites. I've only lost four fish, and not one of them has been a hook pull. You know, it's been things like cutoffs and that. I haven't, okay, haven't had a hook pull. That's fascinating, you say, because you know, as you're aware, I had two hook pulls last night. Yeah. So my, my mechanics of the chod that I was fishing with were clearly, clearly not quite right. And the other thing I see is the, the swivel there's got two rings either end. What's going on there? How's yeah. that sitting in the bottom of the lake? Basically, I have it so it sits like this. So there's okay. a slight, you know, slight hinge. So it's not it's straight up off the main line. No, it's like a boom section. Some people have them. They sit like this. Yeah. Um, just sit straight up off the leader. To me, there's less movement there. I want that slight hinge. You know, it's just it's just a little bit more play. Allows the rig to, to you know move around in the mouth more. And that big curve section, the hook link, yeah. just allows the rig, the mechanics, to sort of work better. Okay, brilliant. And then coming down from the, from the actual rig itself, I see you've got another bead. What what's yep. the advantage of having another bead there? Right, why not let it run all the way down? Well, that, I just like to keep the rig away from the lead, um, and also that gives sort of eight, ten inches or whatever for the lead to sink into any detritus that's right, on the bottom. Okay. That bead then pulls off of there. It will slide down meet this point and down onto this piece of lead core here. Yeah, now I see the, yeah, this is a tiny section of lead core here. Um, and I, I guess I'm looking at it thinking, well, surely the whole idea of lead core is it, it pins the line down. A little bit like that, surely not, no no, 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 that's not what it's for. I mean, there's a strict leader band on this lake, right. so no, you know, no lead core leaders, none of that. Okay. Um, that's not a lead core leader. That's there purely to protect my line. Um, there's, like I say, there's a lot of weed in this lake, so if you're going to get fish weeded, there's a lot of pressure when you're pulling them through the weed. There's a lot of pressure from the swivel onto the main line. Right. Um, so once that swivel's pulled down onto this small piece of lead core, you know, it's total security. It's never going to cut through. You can you okay. can pull as hard as you like. It's just so it's you know fish safety. Safe, thing. Fish safety, yeah. And then, and then we've got a lead on the bottom there, maybe two to three ounces, and, yep. and that that would complete the setup, would it? Yeah, done. Excellent, you know? fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, I think it's. Uh, Probably time we let Elliot get this back in the pond because he's clearly on a fantastic roll and uh, let's hope we can see another big fish or two before the end of the show. You're in a cane? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, well done, Elliot. Don't feel a bad that's, fish That's travelled a long way, it was out here, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it was a bit of an erratic bite. Well, it just ripped off, but... Because a lot of them have pulled up quite slow, you yeah, see? Yeah, the better ones have had from you. But this feels a decent fish. Got a Since I've had the rod in my hand, it's felt like a big fish. Bit of muck up towards that tip. Yeah. That's, that's oh, well done. So tell me, what was that on bait-wise again? This is, that's a bright bright pink uh, squid pop-up. Bright, bright pink. So you, have you played about with that? Because the, the big one you had yesterday was a wild, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, the big, well... A lot of the fish I've had from here have been on pink. Um, yeah. why, do, well, why pick pink? Because I know your free baits are not pink, are they? No, but, but, but yeah, that's why. Because my free baits aren't pink, basically, I want the hook bait to stand out above right. above all else. You know, I've got a nice big spread of boilies out there, yeah. loads of bait out there. Um, it's clearly working, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if you've got five, six hundred baits out there and your hook bait's the same colour, um, worst case scenario, mm. your hook bait could be the 600 one to get eaten by a pure coincidence, you know, not because they've not favoured it. But if it doesn't stand out, there's no reason for them to, to eat it, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, from a sort of a fish point of view, a biology point of view as well, you know, an old fish, the bigger fish, which you've already said you're really trying to hit, um, those fish, maybe their eyesight's deteriorated a little bit. They're, you know, 40-year-old fish, you've said in here, so they're, they're yep. getting on a bit. Maybe that it's, it actually makes life a bit easier for yeah, them. They're bright pink, so here I am, come and have a go, and... They may be getting a bit tired, a bit lazy. They can't resist it they once they get near themselves. it. They can't help themselves, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah it's certainly it's, working, it's fantastic. It's just putting as many things as you can in your favour, you know. Yeah, well you've done that. You think about everything from the lead all the way back to the rod. You're baiting it, if you know, if you put, yeah. put thought, loads of thought into everything, think about it logically, it makes total sense why mm. a pink would work. 
It's a bit out of place, but they're very curious well, often creatures. Often you've got to think a little outside the box, haven't you? And yeah. you know, those things that might seem so ridiculous, bright pink, but it's clearly working. Yeah. It's and the fish you've been catching have been a, a good stamp, haven't yeah. they? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, plodding nicely now. Yeah. A bit hairy along these there's, margins yeah. with the trees, isn't it? I see the fishes run right up the there's bank a, here, but you've... Uh, there's a bit of weed down here. They you've brought that back a tree. In the edge, they keep getting me weeded in this. I wish you'd let them get through to my swim. <laughs> I just, uh, it'd be nice to catch one Essex carp this week. You'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll get one, mate. Don't I'll be like that. a photographer to royalty here. <laughs> you'll get one. Do you no, mind, you, would you mind grabbing my net for yeah, me? Of course, sir. Thank you. So, not quite ready yet, no, she? yet. She's definitely having a little bit of a nose about down there. Still feeling like a good one? Doesn't feel a bad one. Covered a fair bit of water, doesn't it? I'd Probably be ten pound now. I've said it'd that. be a Larry <laughs> male fish. It's all coloured in spawning tubercles and up for a scrap. It's very slow. It hasn't, you know, it's not turning quickly or anything like that. No. Doesn't feel like a small fish. Good. But well, listen, you've had the big mirror. It'd be quite nice to have the big common, and then even if I don't catch anything at yeah. all, we can call that a good show. <laughs> <laughs> Get away from them snakes. Yeah, it's going right along that margin. So get the rod tip under. And you're sinking the line here. What's the? You want the rod tip down to run along the, the tree rather than across yeah. it, don't you? Because that might seem a bit strange to guys watching the show <laughs> that you're sinking the rod tip there. Why is he playing it like a match boy? But that that helps prevent any tangles, doesn't it? Just keeps the line out yeah. of the branches. There's the fish, come Whoa. through. You can see the pop up beautifully in its mouth yeah. there. Look at that. As you were saying, bright pink. It was stocky. Oh, it's a lovely mirror. It might be a stocky, but it's yeah. a beautiful fish. I'd pay handsomely for one of them. Angry fish. Look at him go. <laughs> this could be the first time it's been caught, Elliot. Do you know what? You might be right. It's probably, uh, you've got to imagine, it must be quite a hairy moment for him then. <laughs> yeah, he don't look happy, does he? He's meeting <laughs> Elliot Gray. That's not any old Elliot Gray. It's <laughs> the Elliot Gray. <laughs> Superb. Oh, it's brilliant playing them in the clear yeah. water, isn't it? Seeing a fish roll in yeah. and turn. You know where it's going with that hook bait, didn't you? Ooh, a bit of weed just there. Getting his, just getting his head down in the weed, yeah. is it? And how are you getting it moving again then? Just steady pressure. Like, right. Just don't. I think the worst thing anyone can do with a weedy fish is let the rod go slack. Like, right. I see a lot of people put the rod down. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling. Them, I'm not going to say that's the wrong thing to do because it does work. But. I don't put the rod down until I absolutely have to. So know. if a fish weeds up, for the viewers, you would advocate... Like, Keep the, the line as tight as possible. Just steady pressure. Yeah, full compression and just stay there at full compression and they'll kick free. Yeah. Um, if you let them go slack, they'll just bury further. And how long might that take? I mean, ages sometimes. You know, there's not that much weed. I mean, you've said it gets weedy in the summer, but right yeah. now it's not that much weed, no. is there? Yeah, it can take a while for them to get moving. Again, another thing is height. If you can get up the bank, get a little bit higher. So, oh. you know, not all lakes allow that, but... If you can. And is, what's that, just improving the angle? That, yeah, that like if you ever, you ever go out to a weedy fish in a boat, yeah. you pull it as hard as you like from the bank, you get above it, it just pops yeah, out. Well, actually, I've done a lot in the past. It makes a, it makes a huge, you, you can never quite believe the difference when you get above it and just, just gently pull above it, it just pops up out of the weed. Out. Yeah, so just, um, yeah, just keep the rod full compression and high as possible. Yeah. And I've found they, they tend to just kick themselves out, you know? Yeah. This fish is really giving you a run about. It's happy, it's tanking it? up and down. You see the bits of putty on the line there. A little bit of weed caught on the putty. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. You've got to enjoy these moments. Yeah. <laughs> As I said, I'd pay handsomely for a few minutes of this right now. I try to store them and then enjoy them once it's in the net. <laughs> Come on. Now, well, an angler like yourself, Elliot, you know, you're, you're associated often with fishing on, on really tricky pits and not catching, you know, obviously catching big fish when they come along, but not catching that many fish. Yeah, this is two seasons fishing to me. Yeah, this is, you're, you're, you know, <laughs> this, is, this is great, great sport. I do love it, though. Fantastic, look at that. You see that bright pink pop up just Go on, Scotty. There. Go on, get him, get him, get him. Oh, yes. Got him. Well done, Elliot. Fantastic. <laughs> Lovely fish. Cheers, mate. Well done, Elliot. Another absolute cracker. Cheers, Beautiful mate. fish, and clear to see why he fought like a lunatic, because it's obviously a male fish and there's a bit of milk running out of the vent. So he's, he's obviously been involved in spawning the last two or three weeks and uh, pumped up with uh, testosterone. Let's have a proper look at him then. Pick Come him up in. for the viewers. Him it's a beautiful fish, lovely scales down the lateral line. A couple of cracking great battle scars here. That's what we like to see, isn't it? Scars and scales. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Beautiful fish. 
Well, I think we should get that one back, and then I think I'm going to have a sneak round the other end and see if I can't try and winkle one out, <laughs> Scotty style, out the edge Do to it. save the blank. But yeah, you showed us some fantastic fishing. Well done. Just, just walking back from Elliot's swim, and I've had an absolute scream on the right hand rod. Oh my God, as you can hear, old folk like me shouldn't do the 100 metres. There's a reason we leave it to Usain Bolt. But he's, he's gone in along the bank, made a dash for the tree, but feels like he's still on. So this is on that little 30 yard spot on the, uh, the little pop up. Please come out, please come out, please come out. Please, please, please. So hopefully, fish is just there kicking in the trees. Come on, not far now. Please, 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 please. Oh, yeah, it's out in front of me now, there it goes. Oh my God. That is a mega adrenaline rush. Oh, you've got trees in your net. I'm hoping that Elliot's gonna turn up with a landing net here. Here he is. Complete with a tree, Scotty. You've got me a tree. A tree and a net combined. Shall I take that? Right, you got it? Yeah, hey, top mate. man. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> that is a seriously, seriously good moment. Oh, my word. I'm out of breath. I've got adrenaline coming out of my ears. And uh, I have a land net full of carp, an Essex carp as well. <laughs> so, so chuffed. <laughs> I finally caught one. Look at that, my first Essex car. A beautiful, beautiful mirror. And what's more, it came after a little rig change. I went from the choddies, put on a simple pop-up, bang, I've caught one on my right-hand spot. That little 30-yard mark. Chuffed to bits. Been great to come here to the quarry lake and see Elliot catch some beautiful, beautiful fish. But you know what it's like. It's lovely to get one for yourself. She's getting lively. Time to get her back in the pond and catch another one. So here it is, this is the actual rig that just caught me that lovely fish. So I'll talk you through the components of this setup. Very basic stuff, I know, but it's well worth a closer look. So we've got some anti-tangle tubing, got about 18 inches of that on here uh, to avoid tangles on the cast. Sinking tubing as well, so it pins it to the lake bed. Got my favorite lead clip system here. And as you can see, the lead's gone. It's a jettisoned on the tape, which means during the fight, less chance of that lead hooking up in any weed or any marginal snags. So that's a good setup to use. A uh, little anti-tangle sleeve to keep the, the rig away on the cast. Then moving along, we've got a short length of uh, soft-coated braid, uh, then a tiny section that's been stripped back. You see the little bit of uh, putty there, which acts as a counterweight to my little 15 mil pop-up. Size six, wide gate pattern hook, a little bit of shrink tubing. So real basic stuff, I know, but a deadly, deadly rig, very, very effective. Now, one thing I should point out is I have fished these in the past much, much shorter. So you could, over a clear lake bed, just use a hook link like that. But because there's a bit of debris on the bottom out here, um, Elliot's obviously doing well on the choddies, I wanted to lengthen that out a little bit to ensure that might be sitting up on top of any blanket weed or weed uh, debris that might be on the bottom of the lake. So there you go, two fantastic rigs to fish with. Choddies, they're doing the business for Elliot, and a very basic pop-up rig that's finally caught me a fish. Right, as you may have noticed, it's gone through my other line. Um, 
nightmare situation, but the best thing to do if that does happen is just open your bail arm. Last thing you want is tension from the lead and the rod. You're just going to cause yourself a world of aggro. So I was literally sat on my bed chair, just watching these fish fizzing sort of beyond the spot. And all of a sudden, I've been watching for a good half an hour or so, saw three patches of fizz turn up on the area. And you know, it was a really good feeling I'd get a bite. You're in a game? <laughs> oh my I'm God. Having, I'm having a nightmare here. Eh? I've only just, I've just put a bit of bait out. It's gone through both my other rods. Oh no. Do you want me to pick up? Yeah, can you just pick, I just want to see if the fish line's slack, isn't it? Just pull it tight, but not tight, tight. I just want to see if it's actually, if it runs straight down to the fish or not. Right, keep, I'll, yeah, just keep it slack. Keep it slack, mate. Don't pull it. Oh, it's a good fish, that, isn't it? It is. Oh, blimey. That's a good problem, mate, that is. Look at him all tangled. And... Come on, please. Don't mind that rod tip. Oh, now if it comes up now, we're in with a charge. Right, hang on. It's coming up, 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 it's coming up. Get him, get him. No, no. no. Back, back, back. Hang on. Right, now's your chance. Go on, mate, go on, mate. Yes. <laughs> oh, what a sigh of relief that oh. is. Just drag it now. <laughs> Don't let it. We're caught on the other rig. Right. Oh, my God. Right, we're having a mare here, aren't we? No, we're in control. It's in the landing net. Oh. Um. <laughs> Oh, well, how about that for a bit of aggro? Um, <laughs> luckily, that man there was here because I don't know what I'd have done. But okay. Yeah, basically, the other rods that are out in the lake, where the fish has gone through the line, has pulled the lead back into the weed. They've become jammed and the fish has come to a standstill, sort of out here. Um, right. But my angel has rescued me. Well, Elliot, well done. <laughs> That's amazing. 33 pounder, 38 yesterday. What a way to go into the last night. I've got my trap set. I'm really, really confident of another chance. This man, his confidence must be off the scale. If we're not here in the morning filming another big one, who knows? Good morning. I said I was feeling a lot more confident last night. Look at this cracker. Early hours of the morning, the rain was lashing down. I was thinking I should have had some fish because obviously there was a lot in the back of the bay. Elliot had fish all day long yesterday. Nothing had happened, but the rain came down in the early hours. And as it did, the fish came onto my spots. Just got one in the landing net, just sorting that fish out when this one rattled off. It's a left hand rod, 50 yard spot. Really good scrap in the pouring rain, real atmospheric stuff. Got it in the landing there, and look at this cracking carp. Beautiful long male fish, he's covered in spawning tubercles. Beautiful colour, real mahogany colour. Really chuffed to bits with that. I think Elliot had some bites as well. I certainly heard a flyer in the night. Anyway, very, very happy. What a great trip it's turning out to be. Well, just the one for me last night, but as you can see, it's an absolute beauty, so I'm more than happy with just the one bite. Um, I think the fish moved out of the area. We've got a cold wind and a lot of rain. It's quite shallow down here, so I think they did the off, but the sun's come back out. I've sort of started to see a few fizzers um, in the area, so there's fish clearly back down here. Hopefully, there's time for one more, but if not, I'll, uh, I'll certainly be going home a very, very happy carp angler. Are you in a game, aren't you? <laughs> oh, brilliant stuff. Well done, Elliot. Fantastic. It's took a little while. Like a good one? Uh, if I'm honest, I don't think so. Different day today, isn't it? There's um, 
much cooler breeze. Yes, yeah, it took a lot longer for the fish to... We've not had the sunshine. I've seen a couple of shows opposite you. I've definitely had a couple of flat spots come up on my... my yeah, there's fish out there, definitely. I've seen a few. Yeah. So I've seen a few shows longer. It's starting yeah. to pick up a little bit. It's definitely a different day. There's not the big packs of fish down no. there. That there, were. there was a bit of fizzing this morning, but that sort of, that sort of fizzled out. It's been an amazing session, isn't it? And, you know, we're, we're at the right of the death now, last last hour or two. It's been incredible fun, mate. Yeah, it's been really, you know, really you, good. You've done brilliantly, really, really interesting insight into your use of choddies, how that's all worked. Fascinating to see how you fish them high up off the bottom. You caught your first Essex carp, I have. First, second, third. <laughs> Hang on, third. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. First <laughs> three. Two. How many did you get last night? Just the one? Just, I think you beat me, you didn't you? You want to sharpen your hooks a bit more? Yeah. I, <laughs> I reeled in, you didn't know that, I reeled oh, in just to give you a chance. Get some yeah. sleep. Yeah, yeah. No, that was, uh, no, it was really nice to get a couple of lovely, uh, lovely mahogany mirror this morning. Beautiful fish. How's this one going? Are we weeding up again, is it? Well, uh, no, well, not really, not yet. No, it's, it's, so it's, it's we'll do in a second. been really good to see how you fish those choddies uh, and, you know, using that pink uh, over, your, over your normal bottom base. It's a little bit and, different, um, isn't it? Yeah, and so it's been good, really interesting for me as well to fine tune my setup and, and start getting bites and getting fish on the bank. Uh, it's been a really good session, very interesting indeed. And what a beautiful lake. It's done us Yeah, proud, I'm glad you it? like it. I was hoping you would. Oh, you said on I the phone, you, would. you were <laughs> like, yeah, Scott, you're going to love it, you'll love it. It's everything. Who wouldn't? <laughs> everything a carp angler could want, and it is a very pretty spot. And the fish are just beautiful, aren't they? We've had some fabulous fish, and some good ones too. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Another cracking quarry mirror coming in. Got him. Well, there we go, guys. <laughs> Elliot Gray, what a guest. Fantastic stuff. Well, there we go, Elliot. Another absolute cracker. Well done. Lovely, isn't he? Almost nicked me rod as well. So. <laughs> Brilliant. What a way to end the show. <laughs> Elliot, thank you so much. You've been a fantastic guest. It's been a brilliant insight into the way you approach a lake like this. Yeah, it's been really, really good fun. Thanks for coming. No worries. Well, there we go, viewers. Uh, for more tips and tricks from this series, go to thinkingtackle.co.uk. And if you're not sat at home watching Thinking Tackle, you should be out there fishing. Enjoy.